welcome everyone to the next best picture podcast where we are talking with jeff pope co-writer along with steve coogan of the new film the lost king jeff thank you so much for joining us today how are you doing i'm doing really well i'm, I'm very excited at the uh the rollout of the movie uh in the u.s um and uh hoping that you'll connect with this uh with this I was going to say odd, unusual, bizarre, but <laughs> ultimately heartwarming story. Yeah, well, I was I was lucky enough to see this um, at the TIFF uh, Toronto International Film Festival last year when it premiered, and it is a delight, and I'm very glad to see that it's finally getting uh, rolled out so that people can see it. Uh, I wanted to ask you, you know, this is a this was a big big headline when it first happened um mm. the story of philippa langley and finding uh the body of richard iii i was curious about when you first heard about this story if you heard it before they found the body or after and when did you know that you wanted to write this story and dramatize it for the screen well i i remember the um the headlines in the newspapers at the time that the body was found and it, it, it if i stop and think about it now it, it is the most bizarre sentence a, a middle-aged housewife and mother of divorced mother of two from edinburgh finds richard the third that's exactly what happened uh i i then saw there was a, a documentary made about in fact in fact the crew had been on uh on location when when it happened, I th nobody actually thought that the that Richard the Third the body would be found, but it was more a a, a documentary about um, Philippa and how you know she was uh, never going to give up, and it was you know I'm sure they thought well, you know it's still it's still going to make it's still a good subject matter obsessed housewife tries to find, and then my goodness she actually finds him. Um, so I, 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 that was plugged away at the back of my mind. And then when Steve and I, so it's a long time ago, we're talking about now and Steve and I finished and went through the whole process with Philomena, he, he started talking about it then. Um, I think he'd latched onto it. I think, um, I think he must've seen the documentary and Philippa wrote a book and he reached out to her and, it was a pivotal meeting in Edinburgh where Philippa lives that that really made me think, wow, you know, this is this is this is incredible because, first of all, you've got the drama of a complete amateur, uh, someone who just finds him as much by intuition as academic research. And then much of the glory is taken away from her. So um, it took us a long time to. We were doing different things, but eventually we we really focused and started to dig and dig and and then uh, there it is. We we head down and and we we completed the story, and it it was it was a really really tough story to tell because it's it was such a difficult piece to wrestle to the ground. Yeah, and you're right. It is a it's a fascinating story um from from any angle you choose to look at it um mm. and i was wondering if you know i you all met with philippa at yeah. some point in the process um how early on did you meet with her and did meeting with her and seeing her personality in person did that change how you envisioned the story or how you wrote her character in any way yeah, I mean, I, I we met Philippa before we wrote a syllable, and um, we, I, I was she's roughly the same age as me, um, and a lot of reference points in our lives chimed with mine, and I, I really formed the impression that this was a story of a of a woman who'd been overlooked. I mean, it wasn't that we set out to write a story about. Um, uh, a woman who empowers herself against men who would, who would, uh, who would, who would kind of overlook and dismiss her, but that that was really what 
the story was. I mean, we, we you know, we, we, the more we dug into it, the more we spoke to her, the more we we looked at, at what had happened and analysed it and watched lots of material, um, spent lots of time with Philippa. I was really struck with the press conference organised by Leicester University when uh, they announced that um, the remains were those of Richard III. Philippa, who, 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 it was her dig. She'd led it. She'd raised all the money to, that, that paid the archaeologists. Um, she was invited to speak 13th out of 13 speakers. And I thought, well, that's wrong. This is, you know, it's, uh, we're not saying that, that we, you know, she, she wants to do others down or push them out of the, but for goodness sake, give her some credit, 13th out of 13. So really that, that, that I suppose that there was, that was the grit in the oyster for Steve and myself. We just thought, no, this is not right. What's not fair. What's happened to this, to this woman. Um, and then we, um, the other thing that was really interesting was that as a kid at school, like millions of other people, we, we have some, some idea of Richard III from Shakespeare, uh, the, the most, one of the most, we're told, evil kings in English history, um, murdered the princes, murdered his, murdered his brother, murdered his wife. Um, but what we had to do was we had to dig into his story as well, because we had to understand why Philippa felt like she did about Richard, which was that her strong feeling was that Richard had been maligned unfairly by Shakespeare and by history. So we had to understand what that was about. And that was an interesting journey as well. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, they say that history is written by the winners. And mm. this very much feels like a bit of a reclamation of history by two losers, by both Philippa and by Richard himself. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, and you really feel that throughout, that this is sort of like a justification and sort of fight on both of their behalves. Um, which is which is why I'm interested because the text that goes on screen at the end of the film mm. uh, says that it took until 2018 for yeah. Philippa to get the crown to properly acknowledge Richard. And yeah. I'm wondering, you know, the, the long process of writing everything and editing down and making sure everything fits for the screen. I was wondering what was your thinking about not dramatizing that part of the story in this film because that to me sounds like something that is very fascinating and very dramatic but maybe it wasn't well i i think um uh, uh, sorry i was thinking of, i was i was thinking of, of something which was that what i discovered was that richard the third i didn't know this before digging into the film richard it, it was while he was king in his short reign the principle of innocent until proven guilty was enshrined in law. Yeah, I that, that's true. That that's that's a cornerstone of uh, law in the U.S. now as well, and in many 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 countries across the world. Yeah, what that told me was, well, that doesn't sound much like a despot or a or a dictator or or an evil person. What what that's about is ensuring everybody gets a fair trial. So I'm thinking, you know, this is there's something there is something here. You know, there is something interesting. And then then to discover that, again, contrary to what I'd imagined beforehand, Shakespeare wrote his play over 100 years after Richard died. So really what he's doing is. It's a wonderful play, but the, the bed of material for it is Tudor propaganda about Richard. It's not independent sources so you put all that together and there is you know I, I could do I think he murdered the princes in the tower I really don't know I really don't know I, I there's a part of me that thinks you have to um it's a mistake to look at uh, actions from 500 years ago through 21st century lenses and that you know murdering and assassinating political rivals or or for ex reasons of expediency are less abhorrent then than than they are now but do i think that he got a raw deal from history yes 
But you so you're talking about Philippa's home life and her uh, and her situation. What was interesting about that was that my um, I, I work a lot on stories based uh, m movies and dra dramas based on true stories. And what what's interesting about um, what's interesting about that is that that therein, if if you delve into your, or dig into your subject deeply enough therein you avoid cliche because we all do things differently you know we we, we however small the distinctions are we we express ourselves differently we behave differently so um what happened with philippa when, when i met her was that it was a very interesting situation her husband john played by steve uh, they were divorced and they shared the parenting of their two sons but it wasn't it was there was quite it was a lot of love between them it was one of those things where they'd obviously decided that they couldn't carry on together as a husband and wife but they did love each other and it was a very not unusual home life you know they they kind of loved each other and from time you know you could sense that maybe if things had gone slightly differently they'd still be together they both loved their sons they loved each other and it was just an interesting snapshot of of a family life that that was refreshing yeah and it the home life it, it provides that sort of like grounded and gives more depth to to her character i'm i'm wondering what in learning all about her about this situation in the process of writing it what do you think led philippa to find richard when no one else had been able to for hundreds of years. Well, I think this is what has caused the Leicester University such, I think, embarrassment. Mm -hmm. um, what Philippa was Philippa started from a position where she thought history had treated Richard unfairly. She then became obsessed with him and everything to do with him, and started to piece together bits of research that were scattered, you know, um, 16th century uh, books and articles uh, from, from ancient public, you know, news, news, well, news sheets, the Croyland, Croyland Chronicle, I think one of them was called. But anyway, she, and just things people had written, diaries, uh, accounts and so on. She, she realised that... Actually, there is quite a coherent thread out there, which leads le led her to Richard. Why did she find him and no one did before? Well, I think two reasons. Firstly, I don't think anyone bothered to look. I think most people thought that Richard was evil and he was beaten by Henry VII at the Battle of Bosworth. Henry took the crown. Uh, killed his rival and threw him in the river saw and he was lost to history and that kind of you know shakespeare shakespeare underlined all that for us and i think that kind of sufficed people thought yeah okay we we don't why do we want why do we why would we want to find him along comes philippa and and if there's a message in the film it's never underestimate middle-aged divorced housewives because she thought do you know, I, I can I can see bits of I can see bits of research here. I can see that this mayor, former mayor of Leicester, claimed that he had the body of Richard buried in his garden, and this article says says this and this. She put them all together, and then on top of that was the thing that frightened the academics, which is intuition. She stood in the car park, which was an, an open space. Um, that was to do with the dissolution of the um, Catholic Church and the churches were pulled down. But but there was this feeling that they were still sacred places and people were loath to build on them because it was sacrilegious. So it was a million and million and million to one chance that where he was buried would not have been built on in Leicester city centre. But it was a car park. She stood on a painted white letter R and got the feeling. She, she said to herself he's here and you know what he was 
So you can't quantify that. You can't, there's no amount of research that will lead you to the same conclusion. She just plugged into her feelings. Yeah, and it's it's a fantastic moment and you almost can't believe it happened. That was a spoiler and yet, alert. Yeah. <laughs> spoiler alert for people who yeah. haven't read the news yes. <laughs> um, for the past while. And and yeah, it's it's a bittersweet story though, because mm. she finds him and get does not quite get the credit she deserves. And getting the credit that, you know, from you know, getting the MBE, getting, you know, the crown to even acknowledge Richard takes a, an addi additional years. Yeah. Um, and was there, was that a conscious choice on your part to say th the ending of the story is finding Richard's body in the immediate aftermath and leave the rest to history, to people to research on their own? Or was there, was there something else that you mind is saying, I, I don't want to go into the legal stuff of that happened at the end of this yeah I, I what we felt was that this movie is hopefully the last act in philippa's journey with regard to richard the third that that the fact that a movie was made which vindicated her and told the world exactly what she did was kind of where it was leading to. That's what we felt. So no, we didn't want to. Um, we didn't want to get go head on with all the um, minutiae of the struggle to get from the discovery of the body to the uh, British royal family's website accepting that he was the lawful king for his short reign. We just it was it, that, that's the point of the story. The point of the story is. Philippa found him and um, the, there's, I mean, uh, what happens at the end is she doesn't go to the banquet and instead she goes and speaks to um, some schoolgirls, And that's very Philippa. You know, she, yes. she kind of thought, well, no, I don't want all the pomp and ceremony. It was enough that I found him. Uh, and it, but having said that it has, I think, chipped away at her over the years since the discovery of of Richard that she was just it's been marginalized uh and uh Steve and myself felt a bit of this after the movie's release in in the UK we we kind of thought well this is a, a small serving of what Philip Philip has been getting for the last 10 years because our contention is that we we hold a mirror up and Leicester University doesn't particularly like what they see in that mirror. But uh, we argue that, well, that this, is an, this is a fair account of what happened. Yeah, and it's an account that I think, that I hope that people in the future will look at and say, you know, what this woman did was incredible because yeah, it, it was. Really it truly was. I, you know, I've, I was lucky enough to go to uh, the car park in Leicester and there's a museum there now. It's now a museum. And uh, there's a very clever, I think it's a, like a hologram of exactly where he was found and exactly how he lay mm. in the ground. And of course, when that happens, you're looking at a human being and all you all I could think of was the man. And and not not the myth, not the history so much, but just and and you know he was unceremoniously dumped into a a grave that was that was slightly too small, so the body was hunched. And I'm thinking, well, it doesn't matter that he was a king or whether he was a pauper. He was, you know, in, in death he wasn't afforded respect. Um, so it was it was very moving to see his last resting place. But it is, it is weird to think you're in the middle of a car park and you're surrounded by <laughs> buildings and just over there is a big department store and a shopping centre and you're in Leicester. History moves ever forward. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's all we have time for today. But Jeff, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for speaking with us. And what, what can we expect next from you? 
thank first of all thank you thanks for for your interest uh hope uh people get out there and, and watch it and enjoy it um the next thing the thing that i'm working on now is a is a, a four-part mini series about carrie well, i uh, i can't wait for that, that. For that. so <laughs> yeah i will be there the day <laughs> it is really uh, maybe we'll do this again then. <laughs> i hope so thank you thank you so much sir <laughs>